Welcome to WEF Tech Now. I'm Travis Loop with the Water Environment Federation, joined by my colleague at WEF, Patrick Duby. How's it going? Uh, it's, it's going, you know, WEF Tech, it's busy, but it, it's going well. Yeah, so this is going to be the best video of WEF <laughs> Tech, though, because this is about, this is about pure water brew and Absolutely. drinking beer. So before we start talking, let's just get to business here. Uh, I'm going to make sure we get the sound of this guy opening. Oh, yeah. There you go. Cheers. Cheers. Awesome. So, uh, tell me what we're drinking here. We are drinking uh, to Infinity and Blonde. Um, it's a it's a beer that I made. I home brewed with some uh, basically uh, treated uh, wastewater effluent. So it, it's part. It's a pure water brew. Is what we call it. Yeah. So the pure water brew phenomenon. We like to add that on the end yeah. now. Right. This yeah. is a. Uh, this has been going on for like five or six years, mm -hmm. and uh, it involves taking recycled water, wastewater, treated to meet or beat drinking water standards, yep. and, and then a brewer or a home brewer will take it, uh, turn it into beer, and the whole point is to raise public awareness about water treatment and about uh, the ability that for technology to clean water and, and water sustainability and all that kind of good stuff, right? Yeah, it, it's really um, it's really a messaging tool, basically at, at, the, at the core. Yeah. Um, it, people have been treating water, recycled water, to you know drinking quality water standards for for a while. Um, but there's something different when you you know you, you show this technology to the public and, and you give them a bottle of water. There's something different of bottle of water versus a beer. You know, beer is yeah. just kind of a natural beverage to have when you're having a conversation you say hey let's go grab a beer yeah so that's uh that's kind of why they, they were using beer as the vessel to kind of get this message of water reuse across the conversation and actually before we go further we should um say that the name when you were going to make this mm -hmm. beer we decided to open it up to the public yep. to name it yeah we, uh, we put a call out for uh for any anybody who wanted to name the beer, all we said was it's a Blondale and go wild and give us your, <laughs> your best uh, your best name. So we got about I think 150 responses from the the WEF um, membership, and we also had some uh, internally from our, our staff members, okay. uh, our coworkers, and uh, Patrick uh, Weant um, came up with the idea for to infinity and blonde. It's um, like a genius. It was a genius name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really and he's, good. He's from Maine, somewhere in Maine. So Patrick, yep. Miant, thank you so much yep. for the name, which is clever with to infinity water, use that water over and over again, the blonde ale. Yep. Uh, nice work on the label. We got the o the ode to Buzz Lightyear with the wings yep. on there. And yeah, that's actually done by our coworker, Jeff Frederick. He, he, he made this awesome label. So. Yeah. yeah. So uh, we've been having a, this is the second year we've had a beer garden at WEF Tech. Uh, but we've had some beer smackdowns and tastings for like four or five years now, I think. Yeah, I think in 2015 it started. Uh, okay. Clean Water Services kind of put the challenge out and uh, Milwaukee Sewerage District answered the call. So I believe at the 2015 WEFTEC they had the first uh, uh, sustainable beer smackdown is what yeah. they called it. Um, so they, they had a tasting of the beers, people voted and, and picked their, 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 uh, their favorite. And they also did that again in 2016. And then things kind of started ramping up, and now you know now we have a beer garden on the expo floor. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe we'll get like a, actually a full brewery going yeah, there, yeah, you know, and like a canning line yeah. and start production and. Yeah, that, 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 that's the dream. That's ten years from now. <laughs> tech, uh, for sure. But um, we we also have to give a shout out to Clean Water Services mm -hmm. and Mark Jockers and those guys because they were like the pioneers. They were the originals of of doing pure water brew. Um, they were trying to figure out how to talk about water with the public and, a, and an awesome sour brewer up there, yeah. Art Lawrence, said if you want to talk about water, you should talk about use beer and talk about beer. Uh, and it's been rolling ever since. I think it's over like 60 brewers maybe that have made Pure Water Brew. Yeah. There's been a bunch of action this past year. You got to go to, uh, to an event where they debuted some beer. We want to talk about that. Yeah, the, uh, the event in Texas, uh, the, the Water oh, Now Alliance. Texas was that... one, Louisville was another. Louisville, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, see, you've been making the beer Yeah, rounds. sorry, I got a, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's been a nice perk of work uh, yeah. lately. But um, yeah, so the most recent Pure Water Brew that debuted um, was a partnership between um, the clean water professionals of Kentucky and Tennessee um, and Louisville uh, Metropolitan Sewage District. So. Louisville MSD made the water, created the water, um, and then they reached out to four different local breweries in the area 
uh, they all brewed up beers and debuted it at their um, their annual conference, which was about a month ago. Yeah. Um, so yeah, these four breweries made some some really tasty beers. They had a really great um, community focused event where they brought out you know a bunch of they, they debuted the beers and they had um, a lot of activities for for children and just kind of informed the community about about water and kind of why 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 we do this basically. The yeah. kids weren't drinking the beer though. They weren't no, drinking no. the beer. They no. had they had different activities, <laughs> yeah. juice boxes <laughs> yeah, and yeah, stuff yeah. like that. But um, yeah, that was really awesome that it was at a super public event mm -hmm. where they had it because that's the idea is to get people to be like, whoa, you're treating water wastewater like this and you're making beer with it. So it kind of. Uh, is good and there's a media attention around it too. Media attention, yeah, and, and it's always great when you go to these events and, and people who aren't necessarily in the water industry, and they see that you know free beer getting handed out, yeah. and then you go ahead and you tell them, oh, this is actually made from you know recycled water, right? And they're they're always you know little little wary <laughs> at first, but they take a sip and they're like, this this tastes like beer. This yeah. is, there's nothing different about it, and that's the truth. There's there's nothing different about it. this water is just as pure as the stuff you get out of the tap. Yeah. Another couple things that happened in this past year, uh, Boise, Idaho, mm -hmm. I think, just last fall, Clean Water Services and, and some other folks helped them. I think the pe people from Arizona actually helped them and they went up there and they did uh, three beers and a cider. Mm -hmm. I think it, that was the first cider I've heard of. Um, yeah, that was. That was so that was pretty one. cool. Tons of media around that one also. And I learned recently that in Arizona, they are, um, you know, they had the contest a couple years ago with 26 commercial mm -hmm. brewers, but now they're setting up two permanent stations where brewers can come get, you know, recycled wastewater and brew with it. One in Pima County down by Tucson and one up in Scottsdale. So that's like breakthrough to have a permanent water station for brewers. Yeah, it's spreading, you know, the message is spreading and kind of getting across and, and people are buying in, which is, you know, the end goal of this. Right? Yeah. So home brewing, like I'm super jealous. Uh, I don't know how to home brew. I would yeah. like to. Um, so how long have you been doing that? I've been home brewing probably 10, 12 years now. Okay, yeah. cool, cool. And you did your first pure water brew like last year? Uh, last year, yeah. Went to a local utility, um, got some of their water, uh, treated it at, at home. Um, and then... Um, how, did, how did you treat it? Uh, so we treated it with... Uh, a uh, ceramic filter and then distilled it. Okay. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. We kind of DIY. Um, yeah. It's not quite as advanced as the other technologies. Same, same product, same end result. Still really clean, Super pure clean. water. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, so I took that water and went to a um, local homebrew shop. Um, and there I was, I, I brewed up some beer. And, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So you go, you, they have like a place you can go and yeah. brew with. Yeah. I don't have, unfortunately I, I live in a small place. Don't yeah. have uh, my own equipment anymore. <laughs> so I gotta, I gotta go somewhere else, but, um, Oh, yeah, that's cool. Same exact thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, talk to me about brewing, home brewing beer. Mm -hmm. Then, like, how? What's the, what's the what's the process? I know it's like science, man. It's like chemistry. <sighs> yeah, it really is. Um, so, the water w when you're brewing beer, the water typically that you get, um, most most brewers will take just take water out of the tap. And each each water in each city has a different kind of mineral content and. Yeah. That mineral content can be manipulated by brewers. Um, okay. Depending on the style of beer you make, um, depending on your, your process, you add salts, you add uh, different things to it to kind of get these different things that then play off the yeast, play off the hops, and um, uh, can kind of make the best beer possible for that style. Mm. So, But the water that we, we have with recycled water uh, through these treatment processes, it's basically a blank slate. Yeah. So brewers actually really love it. Um, they can add whatever they want, manipulate it however they want. They're not constrained by mm. um, some you know baseline levels. Here's the minerals, yeah, baseline levels. Yeah. And that, that's very interesting. So you get this blank slate. I know a lot of people when they do pure water brew, whether it's a commercial brewer or a home brewer, they like to go with like lighter styles yep. to kind of showcase the water. Yeah, yeah. We feel that, um, you know, since we're doing this kind of as to, to show how clean the water is, that the water has no off taste or, or anything like that, mm, um, mm. it's best to just let the water kind of uh, shine through the beer. And we, we find that that works best with, you know, lagers and pilsners, ambers. Um, low gravity, low low hopped type beers, not stouts and porters. And, and so a blonde, a blonde ale fits blonde into that for yeah, sure. Yeah, this is good. this is awesome. Good. This is really really yeah. good. good. You know, I like, really like it. I couldn't I couldn't tell that this is a home brew <laughs> beer. I could get this at a restaurant or get it at a at a store and be like, oh yeah, that's, totally that's good the best stuff. compliment I can get. Yeah, 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 it's good. Um, 
So I know that there's some uh, exciting things ahead. We have a documentary film. We're part of a documentary film called uh, Brave Blue World, mm -hmm. and it's going to be uh, looking at how innovation and technology are really poised to, to give us a sustainable water future. It's an uplifting, positive film, and it's going to be uh, premiering this December. And uh, I think we're going to look to make a special beer to have at that. So uh, we're going to call it Brave Brew World. Yeah, that fits. It's perfect. Yeah. So uh, we'll get the we'll get the movie logo on yeah. the yeah. on the label, and you're going to be put to work. Uh, you know, it could be a, a highly attended event. So All right. you know, we might have to partner with a commercial brewer. Who you'll have to go in. To, someplace and work with them yeah. or who knows be a professional brewer by, by the time this that's, is all over that's right you're gonna be you're gonna be and then you're gonna be checking out a west and going to be a brew brewmaster patrick we'll open up Wep's uh first first brewery first uh, pure water brewery yeah. yeah but it's it's really awesome stuff it's really caught on fire uh and like you said earlier it's a way to get the conversation going about Absolutely. water cool yeah. well thanks for coming by thank you for the Appreciate beers yeah. we're gonna sit here and relax and finish these yeah. but uh thanks a lot cheers man. all right thank you all for watching for more interviews, go to weftech.org slash now. Cheers.